happy Sabbath each and every one. Thank you for joining our Black and Foul Sabbath School program. I hope that each and every one of you have had a blessed week. Before we start, let's open with a word of prayer. Dear me, Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity that we have to come and worship you. Thank you, Lord, that you have kept your hand of protection over us, Lord. Thank you, we know that you are a God that cares about us, Lord. Lord, as we go through the Sabbath hours, may our minds and our discussion and our lives speak of your love for each and every one of us, Lord. May we glorify you and may we give you the honor that you deserve, Lord. And Lord, as we will be entering a new week, Lord, we ask that you would be with each and every one of us, guide us in the things that we should be doing and how we should be leading our lives. In. So today I would like us to listen to a message by Pastor Ted Wilson. Greetings, friends. You know, when we started these weekly video messages some time ago, COVID-19 was just starting to affect our lives and turn the world upside down. And since that time, we've seen the world grow more unstable and uncertain. Just about everywhere we turn, we see unease, unrest, and uncertainty. Things don't seem to be getting better and many hearts are filled with anxiety, fearful about what lies ahead. You know, that's something that can help us to remember how the Bible describes the last days. In the book of Luke, chapter 21, verses 25 and 26, we read the following. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken." You see, friends, while times and situations may change, fear and anxiety, they're not new. Tracing back into history 2,000 years ago, we can see in the faces of Christ's disciples, we can see that fear and anxiety and hear it in their voices as they are sure they're going to drown in the Sea of Galilee. Things hadn't started out that way. In fact, it had been a fairly normal day, filled with activity as Jesus taught and healed the many people who crowded around him. But now it was time to leave and get some much-needed rest. The evening was calm and pleasant as Jesus and the disciples stepped into the wooden boat. Quiet settled on the lake as they set sail for the other side. Soon, Jesus was fast asleep in the back of the boat. Quickly, however, everything changed. Deep darkness spread across the sky as the wind swept wildly down the mountain gorges along the eastern shore, causing a fierce tempest to suddenly burst upon the lake. The disciples were terrified. It was so dark, they could no longer see Jesus. And their voices were drowned out by the terrible storm. Where was Jesus? Had he forsaken them? Absorbed by trying to save themselves, they rode harder and forgot about Jesus. It was only as a lightning bolt lit up the sky did they see Jesus asleep in the back. He was there in the boat with them the whole time. Amazed, they woke him up and in despair cried out, 
Master, don't you care that we are perishing? In the beautiful book, The Desire of Ages, we read, Their cry arouses Jesus. As the lightning's glare reveals him, they see the peace of heaven in his face. They read in his glance self-forgetful, tender love, and their hearts, turning to him, cry, Lord, save us, we perish. Never did a soul utter that cry unheeded. Jesus rises. He stands in the midst of his disciples. While the tempest rages, the waves break over them, and the lightning illuminates his countenance, he lifts his hand, so often employed in deeds of mercy, and says to the angry sea, Peace, be still. Instantly, the storm stops. Imagine it. Suddenly the sea is calm again, and so are the amazed disciples. You see, today, friends, we are indeed in the midst of a storm a storm of uncertainty and fear. But we know that an even greater storm is coming. How can we be prepared to meet it? In the book, Our High Calling, we are given this valuable insight. That night in that boat was to the disciples a school where they were to receive their education for the great work which was to be done afterward. The dark hours of trial are to come to everyone as a part of his education for higher work, for more devoted, consecrated effort. The storm was not sent upon the disciples to shipwreck them, but to test and prove them individually. You see, the author continues, the time of our educating will soon be over. We have no time to lose in walking through clouds of doubt and uncertainty. We may stand close to the side of Jesus. Let none shirk one hard lesson or lose the blessing of one hard discipline. Friends, we know according to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11, that for the moment all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So, as we go through these turbulent, unpredictable, and even frightening times, let's press close to Jesus knowing that he is with us in the storm and wants to teach us valuable lessons of faith and trust right now, which will help us now and in the future. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we know that we can be tested. We know that without leaning upon you, we can be troubled and anxious for the future. But if we lean upon you completely, which we do right now, we can be at peace because you are the God of all peace. You can calm the storm. You can give us a calm spirit as we move into turbulent and difficult times. Lord, sustain us as we keep our eyes focused upon you and realize that Jesus is coming soon and that through his power, he will help us to proclaim this message of hope for the future. Thank you for hearing us and thank you for being the master of the storm and bringing peace and calm into our own hearts. May we share that with others right now, all through your power. In Jesus' name we ask it, amen. For this week's health slot, we're continuing with the book, Ministry of Healing, 
and we've reached chapter 3 which is entitled with nature and with God. During his ministry Jesus lived to a great degree an outdoor life. His journeys from place to place were made on foot and much of his teachings was given in open air. In training his disciples he often withdrew from the confusion of the city to the quiet of the fields. All who are under the training of God need a quiet hour for communion with him on their own, with their hearts, with nature and with God. When every other voice is hushed and in the quietness we wait before him, the silence of the soul makes more distinct the voice of God. And this is when he bids us, be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46 verse 10 This week is a relatively short chapter. If you haven't had an opportunity to read it, I would urge you to find a quiet place out under a tree or out in nature somewhere and enjoy this chapter. Happy Sabbath everyone. In 1912, the Titanic sank. Istanbul was part of the Ottoman Empire and the Adventist Church introduced a new way to advance mission. The very first 13 Sabbath offering supported early mission work in India. More than a hundred years later, Adventists around the world have contributed to hundreds of projects, from building schools to launching mission boats. Countless lives worldwide have been transformed by the generous giving to this offering each quarter. Spicer Adventist University in India has benefited from the 13 Sabbath offering several times the school has a rich history of teaching and training students for a higher purpose. In addition to the standard curriculum, Spicer's holistic education helps students grow academically, physically, and spiritually. Diversity is celebrated with students coming from almost every state in India, as well as other countries. The campus is nestled in the city of Pune on a 60-acre campus with plenty of green space to explore and find peace from the busyness of everyday life. In the evening, students gather on the soccer field, the perfect place to unwind after class. Thanks to 13 Sabbath offerings, the university has been able to construct a science complex and currently offers several undergraduate and graduate programs in the field of science. In 1969, the offering helped build new dormitories. A few decades later, another women's dorm and married student housing. Jessica is a Spicer student who found comfort and refuge at the university. Spicer is a uh... It's my only hope where I can study about God so I can learn more about Him and can share to my family. I like the people around here. They are very, uh, very friendly and uh, they are helpful. And I like also uh, the surrounding. It is, a, it is a spiritual place. Teachers strive to create a family-like atmosphere in the classroom and build strong bonds with students. Here in Spicer, the teachers are very close to us. The way how uh, they love us like their, their their own son, and of course the food here, <laughs> the food here is different. And Spicer provide uh, different kinds of food where we cannot get in other university. And they give opportunity for the students to share their ideas, and they were op they are open. The teachers are open, and the people around here are very good. Students and faculty at Spicer Adventist University want to thank you for supporting the 13th Sabbath offering. Thanks to God's blessing and your faithful giving, these projects have helped thousands of students receive training to serve God. Please pray for this campus. Pray that God will continue to use Spicer Adventist University for a higher purpose. Thank you for supporting the 13th Sabbath offering.